Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be repairing this iPhone XR with a cracked back. The adhesive Apple uses is so strong, we'll be using lasers to obliterate the adhesive holding the glass in place, as not even heat will soften the adhesive. While an iPhone with a cracked glass panel would typically require the whole housing to be replaced, this method is quicker and easier than having to remove all the screws, brackets, parts, and tiny little mesh pieces to swap into another housing. Rewa Technology has sent me their Refox laser marking machine to do this repair. It's currently on sale for $1,683 US dollars, which Rewa informs me is the cheapest they have sold this machine for. While these laser machines have come down considerably, they are of course targeted towards repair shops or the serious hobbyist. The whole device is constructed from metal and weighs about 30 kilos, making it a well-constructed piece of machinery. If you're looking to pick one up, check out the link in the description, and when you place the code word Hugh Jeffries in checkout, you will get a repair training book valued at $40 for absolutely free. As this machine comes part of a kit, also included for that $1,683 price tag was a fume extractor, which I've added some PVC pipe to, to extend its reach down to my bench, so I could place the unit up on a shelf. Along with the two machines was a ruler, phone holder, gloves, safety glasses, a USB, glue, and a glue gun. While we are working on the iPhone XR, this CCAD software for this machine supports many other models and brands, including Samsung and Huawei. Although it should be noted that some of these brands such as Blackberry and OnePlus are listed but have no models in the software. The supported models can include both the back and front parts of the phone. For us, we're going to go with the brand Apple and select iPhone XR. There are two, one labeled back cover and one labeled back cover machine. We want the machine version as it contains a couple of extra cutouts so our laser won't burn important parts of the phone. Next on the machine, we can place the phone under the focusing probe and press the autofocus button on the side panel to focus the laser. There are also manual controls to do this if desired. When the laser is in focus, a green light will illuminate on the side panel. It's now time to get the phone into place so we can have some fun with the laser. It's important to use the fume extractor as the laser creates a lot of terrible smelling fumes. In the software, most of the settings are left on default, except the speed was slightly adjusted based on the get started video Rewa sent me. Proceeding, I could enable the red light, which is used to align the phone on the machine before we do any burning. Although there was an issue, I wasn't getting a laser. No manual was supplied with this machine, so I had to contact Rewa. It turns out I just left the lens cap on. Now we can see the red laser. It's tracing an outline of where the white laser will burn. It's important to make sure the phone is positioned correctly to avoid damaging the frame and camera. When we're ready, we can start the process. This first section is filmed in real time so you can see how fast the laser is going. In the first second or two of starting this process, you can see the laser has done an outline around where it will be going. It avoids things like the wireless charging module and any antennas. This means you don't have to disassemble the phone to do this repair. As this process continues, the back of the phone will become transparent as the laser removes the colouring from the panel. The laser also does not heat up the phone at all. This whole process takes around 10 minutes per cycle. I'll do two runs to ensure the back is as easy to remove as possible. After completing the second run, we can take a look at our iPhone XR to find that it's mostly transparent and is now a smoky black colour. Pressing on the glass, you can see flakes of material the laser has removed. For this repair, I left the phone completely assembled and you can see that it's still working just fine. Next, I can go ahead and remove the glass. I placed the phone in a holder that came with my kit and using a suction cup, I could lift up on the glass and insert a tool underneath. From there, I could use a series of plastic picks to avoid scratching the frame as I worked my way around. The next challenge is unadhering the wireless charging module, which is stuck to the glass. Fortunately, mine remained undamaged. 
The more cracked the glass is, the harder it is for the laser to remove the adhesive underneath. This small section was heavily shattered, so required a little bit more prying to remove. While everything is going smoothly, there is still one hurdle we have to deal with. The back glass of this phone goes underneath the camera lens. To make matters worse, the lens is welded to the frame, so we'll have to break the glass around the camera to get it all out. Although Rira has thought of this and has supplied me with some back glass panels with larger camera cutouts, which means our new glass will simply slide over the camera lens. Even so, we'll still need to make sure to remove all of the old glass to make sure the new one fits on nice and flush. With the glass removed, you can see there's not much underneath, just a whole lot of metal and the wireless charging module. While all of the glass has been removed, there's still a fair bit of adhesive left, so we'll need to place the phone back onto the laser machine for another run. I will refocus the machine and give the phone another go. I slightly modified the template to make the space around the LED flash wider as the laser previously clipped the edge of it. With everything set up, it was time to run the laser once again. I thought this time I would do it in lower light conditions so you can get a feel of what the laser looks like in the dark. The adhesive removal requires two runs and you can see it literally flaking away and changing colour on the second run. After it's complete, I can simply lift all of the adhesive away using a metal tool. You can see it's gone from as hard as concrete to simply flaking away with the use of this laser. After cleaning up the wireless charging coil, it's now time to install the new rear panel. You can see this is the slight ridge underneath the camera which the old glass would have sat underneath. Our new glass doesn't require this and will just go straight over the top. Unfortunately, I lost the black rear panel that Rira sent me, but I have every other color for the iPhone XR, so I now had to make the decision on what color I wanted. Due to copyright, Rira doesn't supply glass with logos, however I picked up one that did, so I'll be installing that one instead. One issue I faced with this kit was the glue gun. I just couldn't get it to work, as pressing the trigger didn't move the plunger, so I had to push it by hand. This meant I couldn't be as accurate when applying the new adhesive. I attempted to follow the same pattern as the original factory glue. I am assuming this adhesive is nowhere near as strong as the factory one, which is definitely a positive thing if the glass ever needs to be replaced. Positioning the new glass into place, I can sit a heavy box on top while the glue cures. Afterwards, I can wipe away any excess glue and remove the protective film over our new back panel. And our 10R is complete and working once again. However, there is one last function of the laser machine I'd like to test out. It can also be used to engrave custom text or images. Back in the software, I can upload an image that I created in Photoshop. It is simply the YouTube logo and my name underneath. Just something quick and easy that I could test out on the back of an old iPhone housing. I started out by simply printing it straight onto the back. However, I quickly figured out after a few centimeters that this wasn't going to plan. After some experimenting, I learned that I needed to select the grayscale option in the software, which will print only the black in my image. Testing it out again, you can see this time around, it printed out just fine. Of course, my initial error can never be erased. So I thought I'd try the design again on another scrap housing. It's important to use some test housings before working on a final product because you cannot undo a laser engraving. I believe watching this slowly print out is actually quite satisfying. After it's completed, you can see the final result. As far as I'm aware, it's not possible to engrave in different colors other than this whitish gray. So this is it. We managed to repair an iPhone with a laser machine. And in the process, made a custom black and red iPhone XR. The machine itself is capable of removing the glass from the back of an iPhone or engraving just about anything. Based on my short time with the machine, I'm amazed at what it can do. If you run a repair business, this could reduce the time it takes to repair an iPhone with a broken back, meaning you could do more repairs to make more money. It is for sure an investment, but it may pay itself off. 
However, if you're doing a once-off phone repair or are not regularly fixing devices, of course, this wouldn't make financial sense. The only issues I have with this machine is it didn't come with an instruction manual. However, a basic video was provided, but it missed a few important things. As well as the glue gun not working, maybe I'm not using it correctly, but I don't know if I don't have a manual. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.